Well, hello guys! My name is Kimini. Welcome to this new episode of Is It OP? And today I'll take a look at Jinx, the Harley Queen of League of Legends. This bitch has one of the most annoying laughs in a game. Like seriously, this thing right here tilts me to the next dimension. Don't you just hate when you get as real against yourself and it spams this shit? You belong in a museum. Well, now imagine Jinx with locks. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, and I forgot to mention that her love never ends. So she can laugh at your destroyed nexus till you will close and uninstall the game. Other than that, this crazy ass maniacal killer has one of the most common game movie character concepts. Like Jesus, it's so common that there are even multiple champions in League which are just like Jinx. Yet still, there is one thing which makes them different. Their obsessions. Jin is obsessed with death, Zix is obsessed with water balloons and Jinx is obsessed with weapon. In fact, you can see that on her queue called Switcheroo. Is Sayrito again? Anyways, let's get right into it. Jinx modifies her basic attacks by swapping between Pow Pow, her minigun and fish bones, her rocket launcher. Attacks with Pow Pow grant attack speed, while attacks with fish bones deal area of effect damage, gain increased range and drain mana. Thanks god, the rest is just some useless, uh, I meant very very useful math. Anyways, these two weapons are weapons that you may even see in Jinx's trailer. And in game, they literally make what Jinx is. A bitch with privilege. She is one of the only League's champion with the possibility to use multiple kinds of basic attacks already at level 1. And despite that both of them are ranged, they change Jinx's playstyle by quite a lot. First one, the Pow Pow makes a rainbow out of you, because you don't even need to think about anything mechanically advanced, just shoot the shit out of enemies with your ridiculous attack speed. It's like playing Bastion just to get that play of the game. You know, very skillful. The second one is fish bones, cause you know, shooting explosive rocket powered long range orbital lasers from a shard like looking weapon is cool, you know, just girl things. Anyways, this thing is more of a late game thingy as it will drain you out more quickly than an hour of bad luck in Isaac. Fuck, I hate this game. Plus to that, it enhances your range and gives you splash damage which is effective mainly in late game team fights. A little tip, you can actually use Hurricane, which multiplies your rockets. So now you won't only deal 110% damage, but thanks to the splash from your Hurricane, you will deal up to 165% damage. Now let's just wait for some rise to teleport in. Overall, despite its low mechanical difficulty, the ability to know when to switch between your weapons is quite crucial to Jinx, and unless you master it, Jinx is nearly, if not entirely useless. But what about the third weapon in the trailer? You know, the pistol. It's in her W, because giving free stacking mechanic would be too boring. Oh wait. But still, giving her the ability to swap between three weapons would be just ineffective and boring. Not her last laugh had to be moved, which created this cancerous spell. It's a 1500 units long skill shot that can slow you up to 70% and reveals you for a brief moment of time. Oh, and has 140% AD scaling. It's basically AD version of Nidalee Spear, but because you can get much ADs, this ability certainly won't one-shot people. Rather than that, it will deal a pretty decent chunk of their HPs, but definitely not as much as Nidalee Spear. Most of the time, you will use this ability only for its slow effect, rather than its damage. But if you think that this ability is the only CC that Jinx has, you are greatly mistaken as her E CCs as well. The ability is called Flame Trompers and upon activation will cause Jinx to throw out a line of snare grenades that will explode after 5 seconds, lighting enemies on fire. Flame Trompers will bite enemy champions who walk over them, rooting them in place. By the way, if you are right now wondering why does Jinx have two crowd control abilities, I'll explain it to you quite simply. She has no mobility, this makes her an easy target for bruisers and quite commonly those two CCs that she has still won't cut it and the bruiser will get to her molesting her at a close range. Now instead of going onto her ultimate, I'll go onto her passive. It is called Get Excited and allows Jinx to get 175% bonus movement speed, which decays over 6 seconds whenever an enemy champion or structure dies within 3 seconds of being damaged by her. Additionally, she gains 15% total attack speed for the same duration. 
Basically, whenever you get a kill, you run at enemies Formula 1 style, tearing them apart with your minigun or rocket launcher. By the way, this is how I look when I drink coffee. Seriously, it's a bad idea for me to drink it. It's not gonna end up well. <laughs> her ultimate is called Super Mega Dev Rocket. By the way, I love how every single one of her spells has the exclamation mark behind it. Jinx fires a super rocket across the map that gains damage as it travels. The rocket will explode upon colliding with an enemy champion, dealing damage to it and surrounding enemies based on their missing health. Originally, most of the global ultimates weren't meant to be global, but because they would need some kind of disappearing animation, they were made global so Riot doesn't need to create it. In fact, in the earlier days of Lee, global ultimates weren't used to snipe enemies at long range. Instead of that, people used them as some kind of regular damaging ultimates. If I could compare them to something, they were used as something like Luxus or Valkos' ultimate. But throughout Season 2, people started using them to snipe low HP enemies at long range, as it was much more effective usage of such a spell. And Riot liked it despite the fact that they didn't think that people are gonna use it in such a way. They decided to keep it in the game and in fact embrace these spells to such an extent that they even encouraged sniping with them by giving these spells various effects as their travel. Ash gained longer stun duration, Ezreal lost damage if he had minions and then Jinx was created. The ultimate that had to be the holy grail of all the global ultimates. Damage increased by the range it traveled and plus that it dealt damage depending on target's missing hit points. It literally forces you to use it at long range and at low HP enemies because otherwise you would barely even tickle anyone. But now to the real question. Is Jinx OP? Well, I wouldn't say so. You see, Jinx has always been either way too powerful or way too weak. She could either crush her opponent or she couldn't even out DPS Caitlyn. But nowadays, possibly for the first time ever, I could say that she's quite balanced, probably like Yasuo. In the early game, she's rather mediocre, not because of her damage, but because of the way she's countered. If you pick Caitlyn, Varus, or basically any other poking ADC, you will lose. Why? She has larger range, so if you will try to poke her, she will surely do the same bad. So poking is simply no viable option in this case. What about fighter ADCs? You know, Tristana or Kogma? Nope, they won't be good, as Jinx's Q gives her attack speed with which she will be capable of dueling you out. Not to mention the fact that she will poke you beforehand. But how do you counter her? Pick some burst ADC against her. She has very little to no chance to win. She has no mobility, so she won't be capable of dodging your spells. This pretty much gives Gives you free kills. In late game, no matter what you do, she will become strong. She's a hyper carry after all. Her Q's attack speed scales with level, and her rockets are scaling very well with attack speed, crit, and AD. So her main goal when playing against her is not to get fed from her, but rather than dead to delay her late game. It's something similar to Nessus. In the early game, he's really weak, but once he stacks up, he's a monster. Jinx is no different. But now instead of stacks, you need to get items. But if she still gets to the late game, there are still a few possibilities on how to counter her. First one are of course assassins. There is nothing to talk about, just big assassins. Duh. Next one are hard engaged champions. They can get through her CCs like nothing and then they can tear her apart at melee range. Last possibility are long range poking mages. Zix or Xerath will be just good enough. They can poke her while remaining far, far away from her rent. But I've gotta warn you, BT is one of the main items on Jinx. Anyways, this is gonna be the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed. If it is, give it a like. If you did not, please give it a dislike because I wanna know whether or not I should improve. By the way, if you already did so, please leave a comment about what you disliked about the video so I can improve it. Lastly, if you want this series to continue, subscribe. I can always make a clickbait video that will get lots of views and lots of ratings, but if you subscribe thanks to this video, I can actually tell that you want to see more videos like this coming up in the future. Anyways, hope you enjoyed and I hope that I'll see you next time. Bye!